now with the uh, what all offshore operations are being included in this so basically you have when you do your jacket design or your top side design you have different loads that you need to consider or there are different cases that you will be considering so out of them the first case is going to be your fabrication case so in fabrication what happens and why do you consider fabrication load case so fabrication it is the construction of a uh, structure carried out in the fabrication yard it includes processes such as cutting rolling uh, pressing fitting welding and stress relieving etc so this is basically your fabrication so what is happening in your fabrication is this this is how your jacket is being fabricated so basically you have a structure which is being constructed on the ground and once this row is constructed on the ground you have the other two rows also on the sides these two rows are also constructed on the on the side of the main row and once this construction is done you have to bring them together and bringing them together is a process called rollover okay. so rollover means you will turn the row 90 degrees it can be okay. kept on top of the bottom row and you will weld all these together okay so that is called uh, fabrication so what happens in fabrication is what the reason of uh, why we are doing an so we need to do an analysis here so what is the fabrication or a yard analysis or a fabrication analysis means uh, in this jacket structure you can see this is uh, right now uh, the position is uh, horizontal it is not vertical so most of the jackets are built like this unless it's a very small jacket most of the jackets are built like this so okay. and you you can understand that the final jacket position is supposed to be vertical and the load is supposed to be transferred vertically uh, but you can see in this position the jacket is going to be horizontal and the load you can see is being transferred only on certain points only mm -hmm. on the uh, location where the joints are there mm -hmm. so uh, and the load of the jacket or the weight of the jacket has to be taken by these four three or four points so yeah. to make sure that uh, the jacket is safe or is can be constructed in such a way it is able to carry the load even in this position we have to do an analysis and make sure that the jacket is capable or that leg or that joint is capable of taking the load of the jacket okay so we are because talking about not very we are talking about huge loads here so even the smallest jackets might be around 1500 1200 ton so okay. these 1200 ton jackets should be able to take its own weight and uh, during the transportation during the installation during all this time it is going to be in a horizontal position and the loads are going to be distributed only in two or three points so during mm -hmm. all this time all the stresses should be taken by the jacket without any damage so that the final position also there is not going to be any issue so that is the point of doing a fabrication analysis okay uh next is this usually these jackets are being uh, constructed or fabricated on the uh, on, on something called a key site or a key wall uh, or on on a yard which is very close to the to water so yeah. the 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 process of transferring this from land to the to a barge or to a vessel is called load out yeah so what happens during load out so there are different forms of load out for uh, for a structure for a top side and for a jacket so for a jacket you have these three kinds one is going to be lifted uh, one is going to be skidded and one is going to be trailer load out so lifted load out means you will just use a crane and you can just lift it and uh, move it on to the barge in the case of a very small structure or a very small jacket because usually even for cranes you have two types of cranes you have offshore crane and an on, uh, onshore crane so usually the yard itself most of the time you will not have an offshore crane available you will only have an onshore crane so the limit or the capacity of that yard is to do a lifted load out is going to be very limited so usually if the jacket structures are very small uh it's less than 500 tons you can do some sort of lifted load out or even if it's a thousand tons maybe you can use two or three cranes and then do the uh, load out or lifted load out but usually more than that you will not be able to use any sort of lifting because you need an offshore crane to do the lifting and usually uh, you cannot use a offshore lift uh, on the yard side so they will be using some other form of load out Uh, so that's a drawback of using doing a lifted load out yeah. and so the other format is going to be to do a skidded load out so a, skid, a skidded load out is when you are using a combination of skidways or skid shoes or runners and they are propelled by jacks or winches so what happens in this case is you usually have a main beam or a very huge runner which is going to be going from your onshore to the barge which is connected to the onshore and to the barge and you will skid it on top of this uh, beam 
So you will just put your structure on top of the beam and you just keep pulling it onto the box. Okay. So okay. in that case, you will have to use some sort of a uh, friction. Uh, your friction coefficient has to be very low so that your skidding does not damage your jacket. And mm -hmm. uh, you, you need a proper winch or you need a proper uh, pulling or a pushing mechanism in which this can be, the structure can be pushed or pulled onto the jacket. Sorry, onto the barge. Okay. Okay, so that is your skidded loadout. Now, okay. uh, trailer loadout means you will be using SPMTs. SPMTs means self-propelled modular fans, uh, trailers. Okay. Those are your small uh, trailers which have a number of wheels and axles. And okay. uh, these are the structures which you see in this huge uh, refinery structure or wind farms which are being transported. So okay. instead of using this beam, you will load your jacket or uh, your structure onto these trailers. So these are a couple of you will use maybe four or five trailers and uh, the load will be distributed in such a way that all these trailers will be able to take the loads properly safely and you will drive this SPMT directly onto the barge and you will carry this along with the uh, barge. Okay. So this is the uh, loadout using the trailers. Um, our, uh, top sides will top sides be on the this thing right now on the jacket on the right jacket. now. No, no, no. That will be yeah, separate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. They, everything to do with the to top side will be separate. Okay. They will only be meshed together, uh, mated together on offshore, yeah, not okay. on the jacket. So now, why are we talking about loadout? Because in loadout, what happens is uh, usually same. The first of all, the position is going to be horizontal. So you mm -hmm. have a, the jacket horizontal. You have to check. On top of that, what happens is when you do a lifting. Uh, you have to check for lifting loads so lifting loads means your crane your jacket is being supported on certain pad eyes or on uh, trunnions mm -hmm. uh, which are going to be your load points or where there's going to be stress concentration going to happen so if mm -hmm. you have a load out or a lifting with just four points the whole weight of the jacket is being going to concentrate on those four points so you have mm -hmm. to make sure your jacket is safe there if it's a lifter if it's a lifting loadout if it's a skidded loadout you have a beam and you, as we mentioned before you have only two trusses two launch trusses or two runners so the whole load of the jacket is going to be on the two runners and uh, you have to make sure that the two runners are able to take the whole load of the jacket so that is another loadout analysis uh, for trailer again the same thing you will have the load distribution happening in two or three points only and for these two or three points uh, you have to make sure that uh, the load is being able to carry uh, properly. Also, your loadout, your SPMT should be able to carry the loads. Should be able to, there is an axle limit or an axle capacity for the SPMTs and they should be able to sustain that loads also. Yeah, so this is our uh, skidded loadout. You can see how the skidded loadout is going to happen. Then we have C fastening. So C fastening is once you have this uh, structure loaded onto your barge, you need to C fasten it for the uh, transportation. So this is your transportation analysis or your C fastening analysis. So what happens during transportation is that your barge will be having uh, six degree of freedom. So they have six degree of roll, or sorry, six degree of motions. So you have your uh, uh, roll pitch and your and you have your uh, X Y Z direction also so uh, for all these six directions you need to make sure that your bar uh, sorry your jacket is not being uh, is not moved first of all and second is when you do restrict the motions it should not be uh, there should not be a defect or there should not be any deflections or any uh, any damage to the jacket during your uh, restrictions okay. so for that we are using we do a c fastening analysis to make sure the forces are okay yeah. uh, so there are different types of fastening you can use welded connections so usually we'll be doing welded connections most of the time mm -hmm. uh, when you have pipes or big pipes that you're going to transport for uh, pipelines etc you will be using stanchions mm -hmm. and lashing so lashing will be used when you have uh, pipes and or you have stru small structures which you don't need to have huge welded connections or something like that then you will be using lashing uh, for pipes usually you'll use tangents and welded connections are used for top sides and jackets huge structures okay so this is your uh, c fastening i've done uh, c fastening analysis oh you have already done okay yeah okay so you're familiar with the gusset plates yeah, and yeah. pipes and all this yeah. I'm with c fastening. so transportation is going to be including of in uh, to find out your C fastening forces or to get your uh, motion forces whatever as your motion forces you need to do this so to get your analysis. so here we have to play around with hydrodynamics uh, depending on the shape of your structure depends sorry shape of your vessel 
depending on the wave conditions, depending on wind, wave, current, how your structure is going to respond to the different motions is where you will run the analysis here and find out. Towing of the structure from your fabrication yard to destination after proper sea first. Mm -hmm. So this is how your transportation is going to happen. This is a launch barge and this is going to be launched into the jacket. So this is a transportation of a uh, eight leg jacket using a launch barge. Towing is going to be the process of moving a non -pro Okay, this is nothing to do with this. This is just a how do you tow. Uh, usually you have towing once you do install or once you put the jacket into water, you will do towing. But that is not a very uh, serious analysis or anything. You just need to know the tow capacity of the bullet pull of the uh, towing vessel. Yeah. That's a small, very small uh, analysis uh, run or calculation to get the yeah. analysis uh, towing bullet pull of the towing vessel. That's all. Yeah. Launching. So launching is the final step of transportation of a barge. It is not necessarily the final step because there are different jackets depending on different jackets and different methodologies you have uh, either launching or lifting you can do. Mm -hmm. The objective is to put the jacket in the water. That is the objective. Okay. So you can either lift it in uh, four point lifting and you can put it into water or you can directly launch it into uh, into water uh, yeah. in this method. If it's a top side, you will lift it. You will pick it up and keep it on top of the jacket or it's a float over process that you will have when you do a top side. Uh, so these are the methods which you can use for uh, installing or putting the jacket into the water. And once the jacket is in water, you have something called appending. Mm -hmm. Means you are going to now this is the process where you will be uh, uprighting the jacket where the jacket is made is gone from horizontal to vertical. So you can do appending by two methods. One is going to be lifting and one is going to be control flooding. Mm -hmm. So lifting means you can lift it. You can use a crane and you can hold on to the jacket and you can just uh, lift it uh, and the jacket will come up right because you will be lifting it only from the top side or uh, from the uh, top. In that case, it will automatically lift. It will become appended. Second case is by control flooding in which you don't use a crane, but you use flood lines and you will mm -hmm. you will do control flooding of the jacket. The leg will be controlled, will be flooded uh, by controlling the valves. And that okay. is where the flood lines come into picture and you will start flooding the bottom legs. And as the water fills up, that portion will go down because of the weight and it will upright itself. And then uh, due to the weight, the jacket will come and sit on the seabed. So that Auto is another way of water line tanks. Yeah, I means uh, water line tanks. As we for at the for the step one is that the compartments are filled at the bottom of the jacket so that the jacket can be uprighted. And then once it is upright, we have to fill at the water line tanks so that the weight is increased and the jacket okay. goes and sits on the yeah. seat. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, uprending crane, and the other one is not shown here, but we will be doing that in sacks to see that. We can see it in sacks how it is done. After that, there is pile driving, but this is nothing to do with our analysis. But this is how we do the pile driving. The jacket leg is going, the pile is going through the leg, mm -hmm. and the pile driver is used to uh, drive it through. This is a top side installation. You will just lift the jacket and uh, go install. This is right directly kept on top of the uh, jacket legs. Okay. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for. Uh, an overview of the idea so hope you you got some some idea on the terminology and how it works and all that yeah. i prefer that you you concentrate more on the jacket portion because uh, okay. top side is going to be like any other structure but jacket yeah. portion there'll be a little bit more of a uh, terminologies and terms coming up the operations all this will be different for uh, a jacket so are we considering and, uh, on jackets there are other uh... not not necessary. So that, that's the next point I wanted to know because uh, I'm not sure what you have been told or what we're. So what is the expectation of what we are going to be covering here? Uh, we are basically going to go through the SAC. My objective is going to be to uh, make you understand SAC software. We are not going to go into in depth of analysis portions or uh, structural design. Okay. We are not doing offshore structural uh, design portion. We are more concentrating on the on SAC software itself. So okay. uh, anything related to SAC software, I can cover and I can sort it out for you. Uh, because uh, anything more than that would be more into design portion, which is the actual okay. design of jackets and actual design of uh, top sides and all that. So that portion actually we are not going to be covering. Uh, so I'm not sure what they have told you about it. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify. 
is that yeah. and uh, uh, we will be taking i i expect to take about uh, every uh, five days of uh, two hour classes that is what okay. 